All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Sunday Brunch with Caitlin Bird. I am your host, Caitlin Bird. <laughs> and for those of you wondering why I'm called Caitlin Bird, hold up, hold up. This little guy right here, <laughs> this is Titan. He is my co-host. He's gonna be doing whatever it is that he does throughout the day. Hi, what's up? You wanna go? Okay, go back. Go back, do your stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He'll be down here joining us. So anyways, welcome. If you haven't been here before, I'm so glad to have you here. This is a time where I like to get to know the people that I've met on the internet and, you know, continue the conversation. We go over some of the latest dog-related news on the internet that happened over the week, as well as ending it off on some Reddit pages. So if you guys are not familiar with Reddit, Reddit is actually a forum where everybody from all over the internet and all over the world congregate. So uh, it's definitely an interesting ride and you never know what you're going to find. So that being said, I want to go into the first story of today. So let me make myself a little bit smaller here. So the next article we have is United joins rivals in dropping emotional support animals. So United Airlines, also JetBlue, that's the next story on here. JetBlue also decides to follow suit. So the DOT has some new guidelines. We covered this a couple weeks ago where um, emotional support animals are now considered pets because that is what they are. It, it's, it's definitely been a very long road with putting this into effect, right? Because it's something that hasn't been brought to immediate attention until recent years because so many people, you know, our, our society is becoming more and more pet oriented, right? For better or for worse. And because of that, a lot of people, since there is no, you know, re training requirement, there's behavior requirements to be a service dog, but they're, you know, are these online scams saying they certify dogs online and people buy one of those certifications. There's no bar in, you know, registering a dog versus a cat versus a beehive, which you can look it up. People have registered beehives as service animals. And that's how you know registrations are scams. It's not required by the ADA. Right. So this is all U.S. law that we're talking about. Um, it's not required by the ADA, but the animal has to be performing to standard. And the only animals that can be service animals are dogs and miniature horses. The one thing I would like to see the DOT update is the miniature horses part, because some people really need assistance, but are severely allergic, deathly allergic to dogs but a horse can fill that gap, right? A miniature horse can fill that gap. And while it may seem a little ridiculous, those animals also have to go through training where they can't, you know, potty on the plane for eight hours if they're going on a long flight, right? So I do like the direction that this is going in, but as of how it stands right now, only dogs are allowed on the planes. Right. And of course, that's not equal access to the animals that are actually trained to specifications and are just act as an extension of their handler. They don't cause issues. They're not a problem. Right. They've been trained for years in order to perform a job and a duty for this person. Um, so those are just some of the things that I'm popping off a little bit about. Right. There is definitely some improvement that can be made, but Thankfully, they're keeping it open for comments and revisions. So it is going in the right direction, which I'm really thankful for. So United joins rivals in dropping emotional support animals. Associated Press 2017, a service dog strolls through the aisles inside a United Airlines plane at Newark Liberty International Airport in Newark, New Jersey, while taking part in a training exercise. United announced that starting with flights in February, it will no longer accept emotional support animals. It will let trained service dogs fly for free in the cabin. Hi, Naomi. Nice to see you here. Well, how are you doing? Did you do anything good over the weekend? It will let trained service dogs fly for free, but owners of other animals will have to pay a pet fee to put them in the cargo hold or a carrier that fits under the seat. 
So this is in Chicago. United Airlines is joining the major U.S. carriers in no longer allowing emotional support animals to fly for free. <laughs> Yay! Um, so honestly, I, I, I think if people weren't abusing the power, there wouldn't be an issue, right? Uh, a lot of there's a lot of abuse of the system. That being said, you know, the ADA most the law in the past has been for service and I mean emotional support animals to be allowed in housing, to be allowed in transportation, right? Planes, trains, automobiles. Obviously, this is not the same for planes anymore. You are now considered a pet simply because so many people have been abusing the system, which is very unfortunate, right? For people who actually need an emotional support animal, it sucks. Um, there's no other way to put it, right? Especially if your animal behaves well because other people are ruining it for you. Naomi, not much. My sister visited. It's good airlines are making, it's good airlines are making changes. They should allow mini horses though. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I totally agree with that, Naomi. Um, yeah, later today, we're actually going to be, Reaver and I and Scott will be going to like puppy agility prep. <laughs> we're like second way, we're halfway through the second class. And um, we're just kind of going through the motions at this point. It's like pre-agility agility. There's like some skills that they learn. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Dave, you're here. Nice to see you. You made it. Awesome. Completely agree. ESAs are not normally trained to the levels of service dogs. Yeah, I've never seen an ESA that's been trained to the level of a service dog unless they were previously in a program hypothetically, right? I've never personally seen that, but I know they change jobs all the time. So maybe it became someone's pet and they wanted to have an ESA. I don't know. I'm sure it exists out there. Much more likely to cause a distraction on a flight. Right, right. Um, yes, however, you should be preparing for those distractions with your training. <laughs> so give and take, right? Give and take. Um, yeah, I was actually really proud of Reaver the other day. We went on a, a, a hike at Valley Forge National Park with another friend with their dog. And there was this golden doodle. I swear to God, it's always golden doodles. They're a little loose. They're a little loose in the head. Um, and it was extremely leash reactive. Um, cause when I saw another dog, it really wanted to play, but it freaked out loudest golden doodle I've ever heard. Huge freak out, wanted to pull, wanted to play. And I was like, oh great. This is a perfect training opportunity for Reaver. So we had, I had him sit down, he looked at the dog, like, what the heck is that? <laughs> and looked back at me and we just proofed it right there. He was so phenomenal. Um, however, he also went over to go try and eat some horse poop. <laughs> Uh, went over try to go eat some horse poop. He did eat, eat a little bit of it, but he did drop it. Um, and we ended up proofing it because we ran into several other horse poops along the journey and I ended up proofing it. Um, so you see horse poop, you focus on me. You see a dog barking, you focus on me, right? So it was it was a fantastic opportunity for training because he, he really killed it, really killed it. Yeah, it, it is a lot of fun, Naomi. The, the training classes, they're they're pretty fun. They're pretty chill, not, not high pressure. It's just something fun that we do on Sundays now. <clears throat> okay, so owners, let's see. Owners may be able to transport other animals in the cargo hold or in carriers that fit under a seat in the cabin. Either way, the owner will pay a pet fee, which starts at $125 per flight. That's actually pretty good. Um, if, if my birds are too loud, let me know. I can put them in another room. <laughs> Titan, what are you doing down there? Are you having fun? Do you like pens? This is his current, hi. This is his current love. He likes pens. Hi. We need to close this up. Yeah? You need to chill out? You need to chill out? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Let's chill. Let's chill. There you go. Go have fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, 125 per flight for a dog in your cabin, it's not bad. Uh, last time I was looking to fly Titan with me, and he's a little two-inch bird, they wanted 200 bucks. 
And I think it was on United that I was trying to go on to. Um, but yeah, 200 was way too much. 125 is a lot better, but still a lot. Alaska Airlines, American Airlines, and Delta Airlines announced similar policies in the last several days, and it looks like JetBlue is following suit. The moves, follow, the moves follow a transportation department rule that lets airlines crack down on the growing number of emotional support animals in recent years. The government rules announced last month require airlines to accept service dogs that are trained individually to help a person with a disability. And also the new update to that is that now, whereas before um, it was not allowed, but now psychiatric service dogs are grouped together as a service dog. They are not treated as an emotional support animal. So that is a huge victory. That's a step in the right direction um, because it was it was ridiculous. I remember going through this in, in the program of the Unstoppable Service Dog with my clients, like this is what the DOT has out. I don't particularly agree with it, um, but that's what they have out. All right, okay. The government rules announced last month require airlines to accept service dogs that are trained individuality. Uh, the rules let airlines deny free boarding for companion animals, right? Absolutely. It's huge. It's huge. It's fantastic. For many years, thousands of passengers relied on a previous regulation to bring an animal on board for free, for free, by claiming that it provided emotional support. Airlines and flight attendants believed some passengers abused the rule to avoid pet fees. Yeah, um, I remember there was this picture of a woman and her two giant Great Danes, right? And I don't think either of them were spayed and neutered. They were probably a breeding, part of her breeding program. And they were they were causing some issues. I think one, I think a person was bit by one of the dogs. There were, there's been a lot of instances on planes where people have been bit by dogs um, and service dogs being hurt by other dogs too. I'm surprised there aren't more lawsuits for people's animals getting hurt and disturbed by other people's animals. Because I know several people who have been, who, the, who have had to retire their dogs because of something like that, right? So I'm surprised there aren't more law, we don't see those lawsuits coming up in the news. It's more about people getting hurt by dogs, not dogs and someone's lifeline getting destroyed by somebody else's animal. Right. So that's something that's I'm surprised I don't see more of. I know it happens, but I don't see any of it. All right. So that was that story by Star Advertiser. The next one is about JetBlue. Let's see what they have to say about JetBlue. Has just joined the major U.S. airlines in altering its service animal policy by banning emotional support animals from flying in airplane cabins with their owners. Alaska Airlines, American, and Delta have also announced that they will no longer accept bookings for emotional support animals for travel after January 11th, and that is tomorrow. This comes as a consequence of the Department of Transportation's revision to its Air Carrier Access Act filed in December and taking effect on January 11th, which now limits the definition of service animal to a dog that has been specially trained to perform tasks for the benefit of a person with a disability, regardless of the dog's breed. Previously, passengers were able to fly with their emotional support animals in cabin without an additional charge prompting airline customers to bring all kinds of creatures like cats, turtles, pot pigs, and in one instance, a peacock on board for free as long as they had a doctor's note, which they would usually go online for a scam website that printed off a doctor's note and you just carry it around with you, right? Now the DOT allows airlines to require that customers complete forms and provide documentation attesting to their service dog's health, behavior, and training. JetBlue will require that service animals completed paperwork be submitted at least 48 hours in advance of the state of the disabled passengers travel date. Bookings made for emotional support animals prior to December 20th for flights through February 2021 will still be honored as long as all required documentation has already been submitted to the airline. Those who had planned on flying with an emotional support animal after March 1st will need to find alternative methods such as registering their animal as an 
in-cabin pet for a fee of 125 each way. Unfortunately, this only works if the com combined weight of the animal and its carrier are 20 pounds or less and count as the passenger's carry-on item. Other animals will have to fly as cargo. And um, there's, there's another part of this new ruling where the service animal has to fit underneath the seating, um, which also concerns some people. There are some dogs where you need for mobility work, which cannot fit under seating. Uh, you know, some people do have Great Danes as mobility assistance dogs, and that, you know, you can't fit a Great Dane <laughs> underneath your seat. Um, some I know some people with some larger retrievers that it's extremely uncomfortable to do that for long hours with their dog, you know, and they're a larger retriever. So um, I, again, I think this is a huge step in the right direction, uh, but I also know that, you know, people can be, you know, if you have a larger retriever, that's clearly a well, your well-trained service dog, um, you know, it's, you know, some people, if there's extra room or space, they will allow your dog to lay out a little bit longer and larger. But, you know, you, you can only do, do so much with a Great Dane, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so that's the story. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about the story? Um, do you think, did, did, did you read the DOT's um, new guidelines that came out? Um, I still cannot find their online form. I still can't find that. Let's try to search that for a minute. But, but as I'm searching, let me know. Let me know what you guys think, if there's anything that you've seen a little bit different. Dave says, very common dog use from availability are Labs and Goldens, which wouldn't fit under a seat. Some of them would because they're very small, but not, all, <laughs> not most of them, right? Um, yeah, let me see here. Let me see, um, DOT travel service dog, let's try that. Transportation go briefing room, I think it was briefing room I put in. Final rule can be found here. Let me see. All right, hold up. Hold up. Let me go check something real quick. Okay, final rule defines a service animal as a dog that's integrated to train to do work. Related document service animal final rule FAQ points two and three. One, two. No longer considers an emotional support animal, requires airlines to treat psychiatric as the same as other. Right, right, which is great. Um, I'm looking for the actual form that you guys are going to have to fill out. <laughs> Comment policy, social media, I still haven't found that form. And I don't, and if it's, you know, starting tomorrow, there has to be a form up here. FAQ, click here. Final rule, it's not gonna, there, it's not under there. It's not under there. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Maybe it's left up to the individual airline. Service dog form. You can see I've tried searching that before. There's two new things, files. 
Relief. Ah, okay, there's one. And what's this one? There they are. They finally uploaded to the site. I'm excited. Those would be under the individual airline sites. You sure? Because let's see. Warning, it is a federal crime to make materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statements, entries, or representations knowingly and willfully on this form to secure disability accommodations provided under regulations of the United States Department of Transportation. Ba 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 boom. Okay, so this is the actual form that you are going to need to fill out before going, right? Uh, let's see, they, you attest to health, which they were talking about, attest to training and behavior, blank has been trained to do work to perform tasks, name of animal trainer or training organization, blank has been trained to behave in public, I understand properly trained dogs are under control, I understand that if blank shows, blank as a pet, the best of my knowledge. So this is interesting, this is what people were kind of concerned about, name of animal trainer or training organization. has been trained to behave in a public setting. So for those of you with self-trained service dogs, I don't know how they are going to react when you say, okay, I'm applying and my name is Caitlin. And I'm going to say that I trained my dog and this is my phone number. I don't know how they will react to that. They might, in the beginning, maybe they might they might be learning and might not understand that people can train their own service dogs, right? Um, so there may be some issue with that in the beginning, but as things go along, again, they're still open to revisions. Um, it's something that might be changed in the future, right? Of course, if you're training with me, you would just say, Caitlin's animal, training services, right? And that's what you would put in. Um, but for those of you who are not, well, questions are still here. Questions still about. And this is the one to say that your dog can't, will not, and does, it has been trained to hold it during the entire entirety of your flight or to relieve it in a manner that is controlled, such as a pee pad. Okay. Dave says, as long as the dog is behaving, it shouldn't be an issue. I would hope so, right? I would hope so. Um, but yeah, they got little check marks here. Check boxes. I like check boxes. I don't know why. They're fun. I like them. <laughs> okay. Well, they have the forms. I'm very happy now. Um, yeah, because as soon as it came out about a month ago, I was like, where's the forms? Where's the forms? You said you would have forms, DOT. Like, where is it? And now it's here. Thank God. Okay, awesome. But I also, I have seen other forms with the individual airlines as well. I know a friend who was traveling recently and she gave me a link to, I think it was United that she was flying and United also has a form. Um, so you might need like three forms before you fly with your animal. Just keep that in mind. Okay. But awesome. Yeah. All in all, really good start. Um, <laughs> okay. This article, I don't know 